Happy Women's History Month. Welcome to Women's Business Report. I'm Sue McCarthy, your host. Women's Business Report was created last year in March as a special for Women's History Month. Now we are excited to celebrate our first anniversary. Today's show will feature international clothing designer Miriam Heydere and a look back at our first year. Please stay tuned. When I think back on my day, I'm so thankful I used catering by Uptown. They gave me the wedding of my dreams. Catering by Uptown handled everything. The food was amazing and people are still talking about it. They are so much more than a catering company. Their venues are absolutely stunning. They want your wedding day to be as perfect as they want their daughter's wedding day to be. That day is a day I will never forget. It was perfect. I would definitely recommend catering by Uptown. Welcome back to Women's Business Report. I'm Sue McCarthy. We are excited to start our second year by featuring international designer Miriam Hedere. Miriam's designs provide great style and fashion for real women, not the unusual tall, skinny models you only see on runways. Because her fashions are more in line with what women want and need, businesswomen, entertainers, and even politicians choose her fashions to build their brand. Congresswoman Corrine Brown and Eleanor Holmes Norton proudly walk the halls of Congress wearing her name tag. Grammy Award winning entertainer Patti LaBelle is often seen strutting her fashions on stage. Hello, Women's Business Report. Thank you for watching. My name is Mariam Heydari. I'm a designer and founder of Heydari Design. Oh, 30 years ago, I decided to have my own business and I opened a retail shop in Georgetown. 18 years later, I realized the gap in a fashion. Designer was not doing exactly what at that time the woman needs. There was a gap between the sizes. So the best uh, size in the store would, was up to like 10, 12. And uh, I decided to try to complete that gap and create the Hey Daddy design. Hello, Women's Business Report. I'm here at the shop today to buy some clothes for my son's upcoming wedding in Italy. I met Mariam about 20 years ago and we've been working together. She designs dresses for me. Um, she's always very helpful. She knows my style. She knows my fit. I can always depend on her. Uh, to find what is right for me, for my body, for any occasion that comes up. I try to design things packable, on the go, women can just pack it and go, dress it down or dress it up, and be able uh, to feel confidence in it and comfortable. I try to have something with the, as classic, but more artsy. So anybody wearing it feels more uh, unique and different. Hello, Women's Business Report. My name is Helen Voss, and I am a very satisfied customer of Hidari Designs. I love them because they're different, because they are not always symmetrical in what you'd expect. They're very easy to wear, and Given that I'm not 22 anymore, I appreciate that they allow me to put on a little weight and mask it. I'm Congresswoman Corrine Brown from the 5th Congressional District of Florida and the ranking member in the House of Representatives on Veterans Affairs and a senior member on transportation. I was shopping at this shop that was carrying her stuff. And I looked in the label and I said, I'm going to call her up. And I called it, and she had three locations in Washington. And so I said, well, they were having, I went to the one near my house. She has one near my house. And I just fell in love with the, her clothes. But keep it in mind, I've been wearing her clothes for years, but not buying them directly from her. When the person walk in my store, uh, they realize they are in a different kind of a shop. Uh, what? My designs really stands out from different design. I um, always uh, try to create things funky, artsy. I'm obsessed with pockets. 
everything I design, somehow I want to create different type of a pocket there. Honestly, is they are just so. She made me an outfit for the Congressional Black Caucus, which which was gorgeous, and I show you a picture of it. And when I walked in and I had the cape on and I dropped it, and everybody said, "Woo!" <laughs> she was my guest at the Congressional Black Caucus this year. I have opera singer. I have congresswoman. I have doctors, lawyers, very important. Uh, they just uh, they just love it. They say, I have a lot of different designers. I spend a lot of money all my life for clothes. Since I discovered you, since I'm wearing Hey Daddy, I just get most compliment. And women must support women. And, and I'm a, a big supporter of minority businesses and female-owned businesses because they are the engine that, you know, choop, 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 to get it done. And I mean, she has over, I think, 600 outlets around the country. So her design is all over the country. But like I said, she is just, she does such a great job in making sure, well, what, what was told to me was that she was a, kind of a buyer and all of the sizes were six, you know, seven, eight, those women, nothing against them. But she had a lot of full figured women. And so she couldn't find anything for them. So she said, I can design for them. And she's done such a great job. Our next edition of Women's Business Report will air Sunday, April 24th at 3.30 p.m. right here on News Channel 8. If you know of a businesswoman you feel we should feature, please email us at info at womensbusinessreport.com. You can also call our office at 202 347-1415. When I think back on my day, I'm so thankful I used Catering by Uptown. They gave me the wedding of my dreams. Catering by Uptown handled everything. The food was amazing and people are still talking about it. They are so much more than a catering company. Their venues are absolutely stunning. They want your wedding day to be as perfect as they want their daughter's wedding day to be. That day is a day I will never forget. It was perfect. I would definitely recommend catering that town. It's our first anniversary here on Women's Business Report. Today, we look back at our first year by sharing some of our best features. Here's another look at Ethel Taylor and Doggy Washerette. Hi, my name is Ethel Taylor, and I'm the owner of the Doggy Washerette. I want to share with you my story, how I got into the dog industry. About 13 years ago, my sister and I went to a self-serve dog wash in Richmond, where we're from. She has two large Rottweilers, and she had found this place to wash her dogs herself. So when we got there, there were two large human bathtubs that were built up on wooden platforms. And I said to myself, this is pretty cool. And I don't know of anything like this in, in Washington. If I ever did anything on my own, maybe this is something I would consider. Hi, I'm Erin Malone. Um, my boyfriend and I, Scott, have been coming to Doggy Washerette for the past five months now. We've been residents of D.C. for quite a few years, and I've had Sophie for seven years. But we have had some issues at other dog washing facilities um, where you pay them nearly $100 to wash your dog, and uh, maybe you don't tr quite trust the people, and you get your dog back, and they're still wet. So we thought we'd give this place a try, and Ethel was amazing when I met her. She hung out with Sophie, she took her in the back for a while and just got acclimated with her and then she washed her, called me, I come pick her up and she looked and smelled wonderful. So I was instantly hooked. Doggy Washerette is a self-serve dog wash where you can come and wash your dog yourself. We have everything you need, just bring the dog. Our feature is the K9000 self-serve dog wash. It's a dog wash that's self-contained the water and the shampoo come out together. The dryer is attached. It takes cash and credit cards. You do it yourself. Your dog is comfortable, restrained properly, and you have everything you need. We take the hassle out of washing your dog. We have grooming tables available, which no one else gives customers the opportunity to use. Professional equipment, furminators, brushes, toothbrush, toothpaste, ear cleaner, Everything's provided for you, all included in one price, no matter the size or the breed of your dog. 
You can take better care of your dog. We help you do that. That's our motto. For only $20, you can wash and dry your dog. We say around here, just bring the dog. We have everything you need. We have towels, <laughs> specialty shampoo, shampoo brushes, ear cleaner, cotton swabs. We have ferminators. If your dog's shedding all over your house, come here and use ours. Also, we have professional grooming equipment that you can borrow so you don't have to go out and buy it yourself. Toothbrushes, doggy toothpaste. Never brush your dog's teeth with your toothpaste. We also have hand dryers in case your dog's more sensitive to noise. We even have cologne and baby powder cologne for puppies and disposable aprons so you don't get wet. Another aspect of my business that I think is very special is um, the therapeutic grooming, which goes beyond just a cute breed cut, but truly uh, trying to meet the dog where he has need as far as his skin and his coat are concerned, whether it be extremely oily, whether it be extremely dry. I have three different regimens that I will pull from to meet your dog at his need and to truly get him into a better place as far as the um, health of his coat and skin, as well as the cuteness of the cut. He's a little too big and a little too frisky to have at the house. And uh, we had him out in the woods today, and uh, he got into a few things. So nice to have him clean and fresh, especially since uh, when it's cold like this, he likes to hop in the bed at night. So having a clean, nice smelling dog, Jumping in the bed might be a little better than the kind of skunky one. <laughs> we'll see. Right now we're into our second year of grooming um, services and um, over 400 um, full groom clients I have at the moment. So God has um, blessed us and the self-serve continues to grow. The full grooming continues to grow. Joy is our ambassador and she was recently certified as a therapy dog. So she goes out into the community, to nursing homes, to hospitals, and she brings joy to all those who know her. All of our customers love her and they look forward to seeing her when they come to the Doggy Washerette. As you can see, she's the product of, our, of one of my many creative grooming classes. This is non-toxic doggy dye that just brings attention and gets her love from everyone who sees her. We like to thank the Women's Business Report for spotlighting us today. And if you're a woman in business, go for it. If you'd like more information about the Doggy Washerette, visit our website, doggywasherette.com. We're also on Facebook at Doggy Washerette. And Joy has her own Facebook page, Joy the Poodle. We are celebrating the first anniversary of Women's Business Report. In addition to making the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine, Nicole Parker of The Ellison Group was also named as one of the Small Business Administration's Business Person of the Year. We were proud to have Nicole on our program. Hello, Women's Business Report. My name is Nicole Parker, the Chief Executive Officer of The Ellison Group. Hi, I'm Antonio Doss. I'm the District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration's Washington Metropolitan Area District Office. And today we're at Ellison Group to celebrate the naming of Nicole Parker, CEO, as the Small Business Person of the Year for the Washington, D.C. Office of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Today was a great day. Um, <laughs> it was a monumental day for me. I'm very excited to be selected as Washington, D.C.'s SBA uh, district office here in Washington, D.C., the 2015 Small Business Person of the Year. Very excited. Nicole is being recognized as a Small Business Person of the Year by virtue of the outstanding uh, record that she has compiled as the CEO of Ellison Group. Uh, what she has demonstrated is that by working progressively at seeking business, taking advantage of SBA resource programs, and opportunities that she's been able to really grow her business, move it to a whole nother level. The Ellison Group is a construction and project management firm where we focus in four key areas, which is construction management, information technology, 
design and facilities and logistics. When we look at making these awards, we're looking at how a company has been able to uh, generate growth in its operations and the way it's been able to uh, increase business opportunities for itself as well as creating employment opportunities for those people who need jobs. I thought this company was successful when I knew I could give other people opportunities who didn't think that they could reach those opportunities or reach the goals that they wanted to reach because I often saw myself in them in the past when I didn't think I could reach goals or when I was denied promotion passovers or told no as a woman in construction. And so to be able to turn those no's into next opportunities and show my staff and my employees Working with a female CEO is the most amazing experience that I've had so far because most of my, actually all of my professional experiences have been working for um, male CEOs as architecture is an industry that is heavily dominated by uh, white males and as a double minority um, in the profession working with someone who looks like me, who has experiences similar to me and who also encourages me, um, makes a big difference in terms of me wanting to do that much better. Anyone would love to work for Ellison because of our corporate culture. We're one big family. Everyone works very hard, but it is not done in vain. Everything you do is appreciated from the top to the bottom. No one is bigger than anyone else. We all share the same goals and that's just to do great work, wonderful work ethic, and do the best thing that we can do. The culture here at the Ellison Group is one of a small family or a close-knit family. We care genuinely about one another. We care genuinely about the work that we do here. And as a result, we work very, very well as a team which is key in making sure that we serve our clients successfully. The Ellison Group was birthed in 2007 after working 14 years in a male-dominated construction industry. As a female, I was denied many promotion passovers and often told a woman in construction, that's not your job and you can't do it. So I, always I took my nose and turned those into next opportunities and decided to launch the company. And from that, I grew organically. Uh, Nicole and I first met in 2005. Uh, she uh, hired me to take on a project that she was working on in uh, New Orleans. It was post-Katrina. And uh, we were traveling down to uh, restore an office building that had been damaged rather heavily. Where we traveled uh, to many dangerous and condemned areas trying to help with that rebuild, uh, rebuilding of the city itself and meeting so many people who had lost family members to the hurricane. I'm quite proud of the, the results. Uh, there were roughly 600 people dislodged as a result of the storm and it, that uh, worked in this office and we were able to get them all back and functioning uh, in relatively short order. One of my most proudest moments is launching the Nicole Parker Foundation, which is very dear to my heart. It's an advocacy framework for African-American males who grew up in a single parent environment. I was that mother who raised an African-American male out of college. At the Small Business Administration, we're very interested in helping to create a strong, vibrant economy based on small businesses. And the Ellison Group is a prime example of what is possible when certain things come together, outstanding leadership by a CEO and taking advantage again of uh, programs that we have like SCORE and our 8A program. Just to be able to grace the cover of a black enterprise, this monumental moment as a small business owner, know that this can be you. Think outside of your comfort zone, thinking out of the box. Be able to take that passion within you and that vision and move forward and have the momentum to keep going no matter what. Stay the course. Don't give up. I encourage you, start today. We are looking back at the first year of Women's Business Report here on News Channel 8. We would like to thank you for your support. 
Everything has a genesis. For Women's Business Report, it was the moment Alvin Jones, the show's executive producer, met Joyce Arndt. Joyce is the owner of Ray's Auto Body Shop in Vienna, Virginia. For over 50 years, she and her husband, Ray, were an institution. She survived his passing and has kept up the excellent level of service that Ray so sternly demanded. Ray Arndt, a complex person, a true self-made man with little education. He said when he was in the eighth grade, a teacher told him if he didn't stay in school and get an education, he would never amount to anything. And that comment was what started the fire in him to learn a trade and be something. Ray worked in many shops and dealerships around the area, starting with sweeping the floors and moving cars. He did every job with the same attitude that made his employers give him a chance to move up and others were willing to train him. A few years later, a man that owned a paint supply store told him he was too good at his business. He should own his own shop. The man actually gave him credit to buy equipment and supplies to get started. Ray found a small building in the town of Vienna where he lived that was for rent. Now the fire was really burning and he decided to buy the building. It was right on the corner. Ray would leave work and he'd come by and have a beer or sometimes eat dinner. And I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was. And uh, he noticed that I stayed and I didn't, we didn't close until 12. And quite often I'd be there by myself at 12 to lock up. So he just started staying and walking out to my car. And one, one night he came in with his payroll book. He couldn't imagine why you know, things weren't matching. And uh, so I took his payroll book and I, I said, well, you know, so-and-so made this, so-and-so made this, so-and-so made that. And he said, wait a minute, I fired that guy months ago. And the lady that was working for him had just continued to pay that person and was taking the money. He would come by on <laughs> Thursday night with his payroll book and I would do his payroll for him so he could wouldn't get cheated. And I felt sorry for him, you know. Somebody was cheating him, he was working hard. He'd stay till midnight sometimes and working on cars himself. Um, and uh, I just felt sorry for him. So then after my father sold the business, he said, well, why don't you come and work for me? I said, oh, okay, that's fine with me. And uh, that's how I met him. Over the years, his business grew. He had many young people to come and work in the summer, washing cars, sweeping. Many stayed to learn more. Ray took pride in these young people. I don't think he really knew how much or just what each one took away with them except how to work hard. He grew his business from a small three-bay building in 1963 until 2000 when he was able to build a new shop just down the street. He was the proudest person I've ever seen. Every brick, I think, I swear to God, I think he touched every, every brick that went in it. Just the way he did things, you know. It, you do it right or you don't do it at all. So he, he, was, he, he was very difficult to work with. <laughs> he never cheated anyone. He always said every car should be repaired as if it was his own. He never wanted to do anything halfway. He would just say, fix it right or not at all. Always just the ordinary guy, hard work, drink a little beer and treat everyone the same. I ran the office, really. When, when he first started, it was a little cubby hole up here, a little, like, little slanted floor. That was it. The office was about as big as the bathroom in there. and. Uh, I just accidentally ended up helping him. He would, he was, he was the one who would come in the office and I'd be in the middle of doing something and he'd say, call so-and-so, I need this or do that. And I'd say, well, well, you know, wait a minute, I got a customer, you know, here, oh, wait a minute. He'd say, don't tell me to wait a minute. You know, if he, and then he'd, and then and if I'd say, just, be quiet for a minute, you know. Don't tell me to be quiet. Your name's not on the building out front. <laughs> <laughs>
and that that was that was all, always his argument with me. If I said anything, you know, about doing something different or anything like that, your name's not on the building. <laughs> I think you would be surprised that I didn't just turn around and sell because I I have I was an only child, and I was raised to make my own decisions, and. That's why I never smoked, I never drank in high school. I had a lot of fun, I had a lot of friends, but I did it the way that I wanted to do it. I didn't, if somebody said, my mother used to tell me, if somebody told you to stand out in the highway, would you do it? And, and I, I just, I've always been the one to do what people least expect me to do. Ray left us all too soon. In 2012, at the age of 82, he left a legacy of good work, fine reputation, and a respect from everyone that knew him. When I think back on my day, I'm so thankful I used Catering by Uptown. They gave me the wedding of my dreams. Catering by Uptown handled everything. The food was amazing, and people are still talking about it. They are so much more than a catering company. Their venues are absolutely stunning. They want your wedding day to be as perfect as they want their daughter's wedding day to be. That day is a day I will never forget. It was perfect. I would definitely recommend catering that time. We would like to thank you for supporting Women's Business Report and helping us make it to our first anniversary. We would also like to thank our sponsors, including Catering by Uptown. Much gratitude goes to our media partner, Copa Style Magazine, and Rod Branch for the unwavering support of our first year. Also, we would like to thank Exclusive Automotive Group in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, home of Bentley, Aston Martin, and McLaren. All fine, luxurious, exotic automobiles for their partnership from day one. Our next edition of Women's Business Report will air Sunday, April 24th at 3.30 p.m. right here on News Channel 8. If you know of a businesswoman you feel we should feature, please email us at info at womensbusinessreport.com. You can also call our office at 202-347-1415. I'm Sue McCarthy. Thank you for watching. We'd like to thank our sponsor, GearShift Studios, the area's leading resource in video marketing. We'd like to thank our web development sponsor, Foster Web Marketing.